Okay, hello everyone, uh, I'm Sean and I'll be your MC for today. Thank you so much for coming to the API Days conference. I hope that everyone is excited for the three speakers that we have here today. So that's Ihui, Aravin, and Jean, who will be both uh, will be all touching on the API products theme. Now, uh, Ihui is an experienced software engineer at WISE. Uh, in his talk, Ihui will introduce the concept of a dynamic flow used at WISE to decouple front-end code from the data that they collect. He will be sharing about how this powerful open source uh, framework can allow you to evolve your product without needing your API consumers to change the front end code. So can you please uh, give a big round of applause to uh, Ihui. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, th thanks for coming. The topic would be iterate faster with dynamic flow. So a quick introduction about myself. My name is Yi Hui, and I'm a solutions engineer at WISE. So at WISE, um, we are a global technology payment company building the best way for you to move money across the world. All right? So our mission is to make cross-border payments instant, convenient, transparent, and eventually free. Okay? So today, we will have a look at what dynamic flow is. We'll have a look at the backstory of how it comes to be in WISE, what it is, and how we can use it. Okay, so what is the backstory of dynamic flow? Why do we need it? So it, the story goes back to 2011 when we had just started. So back then, we only had one pair of currency, which is Euro and British pounds. So things are still very simple because there's only so limited number of currencies. The UI was simple because we only have one client, which is web. At that time, we do not have uh, Android and iOS yet. We only have one pair of currencies that we have set, Euro and British pounds. This means we have to have two onboarding flows, one for each currency and two recipient types, also one for each currency. But we are not just staying in one market, right? We are not just going to show, uh, have one pair of currencies. We are going to expand it to more. So whenever we add new currencies, um, that's when new onboarding flow comes in. Because new currencies, new onboarding flow, it also involves new recipient type. So if you look at it, um, just one currency, we need to add at least two flows. But at the same time, if we look at the number of routes, right, it actually expands, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Exponentially, sorry, yeah. So if you look at the, on, on the slide, just with two currencies, we already have two routes because two ways, um, sending from Euro to GBP and GBP to Euro, those are considered two routes. And just by adding a few more currencies, with just 10 currencies, we already have about 90 routes. So imagine right now we have more than 10, so it increased by a lot and a lot. So that would be a lot of um, different flows that we need to maintain. So what do we have today at WISE? Today, we can do from more than 40 currencies, 40 current countries, sorry, we can send to more than 70 countries and if you look at that, it, it automatically tells you how many routes that we need to support right now, a lot. It cannot be done by hard coding. So on average, we are also processing about 9 billion British pounds on average per month. That is a lot of money that we cannot go screw up. We need to make sure that everything goes through correctly. And we have about 100 recipient types. So the number of recipient types is actually more than the number of currencies. This is because um, take every currency, for example, there will be at least one recipient type. But for some currencies, for example, Singapore dollars, we have recipients using bank transfer. So you send using FAST or any kind of payment routes. We also have another route called pay down. So pay now is another recipient types. So if we put all these different types of recipients together, combined with all the currencies that we support, that's a lot, a lot of flow. 
So what are the challenges that we have here at WISE? So number one, when we are adding, we are, when we are expanding into new current countries, we have new currency to support, we have new onboarding flow, we have new recipient type. Even for an existing currency that we have or existing market that we are in, because there are ways that we can add new payment options, new recipient types, so that is a lot of, uh, that's another change that we need to make. But at WISE, we have a lot of really, really good engineers, so, and we are very committed to make all these changes. But still, we are getting hit by the development cycle. What, are, what do I mean by that? So any change that we need, right? The engineers will need to code, we need to test, we need to raise pull requests, get it reviewed by the relevant teams, merge, and then release. This could easily take days, if not weeks. So that is a hurdle that we need to get across. And once that is done, we get hit by the release cycle. For the backend, it is fine because we are in control of how fast we want to release things. But when it comes to the front end, because we have Android, iOS, we need to upload the new build to the App Store and Play Store for Google and Apple to review before we can get it up in the store. So that adds more time. Also, once it is in the store, there's a chance that the customer will not immediately update to the latest version. Sometimes we just don't, right? So we can't promise that the user will always have the latest and greatest app that we have. This means that there are some flows that might be broken if we change certain things. So the total relay cycle would be long. OK, I have briefly talked about what WISE is. Um, but for me, myself, I come from a team called WISE Platform. So at WISE Platform, we work with banks and new banks like Shinhan Bank in Korea and Bank Mandiri in Indonesia. So we work with these kind of banks together with other common corporate names like Google Pay, um, Tiger Brokers in Singapore to bring our global um, infrastructure to the partners so that they can leverage on it and bring faster and cheaper payments in, and as well as international accounts to their customers. Right? So as of now, we have about 60 over partners around the world and this number is still growing very quickly. So imagine we now have three clients, Android, iOS, and web. Just to maintain these three is a lot of headache. What, when we put in all the partners, that's another 60 plus. And if each of them is having three clients as well, that's a lot, a lot of clients to maintain. And if our API breaks, it breaks everywhere. So it's a bit hard to maintain. OK, so I give you a big what if, right? What if we can make it so that all the different clients, all the different partners, they do not have to hard code anything on their front end to be able to use our APIs. So for the different flows that we have mentioned, including building a re uh, creating a recipient or getting additional information, what if we can dynamically tell them what they need to collect through API? So give you an example. So the front end would be asking the back, their back end on what are the fields that I need to collect for an action to create a recipient for the Singapore dollar currency, for example. All right. The, the back end will reply with a list of fields, for example, name, bank, and account. Fine. The, the UI is now able to generate, uh, the front end is now able to generate the UI, present it to the customer, the customer fills it in, and submit. Things are working well. Now, suppose there's a regulation change, there's a requirement change that we now need to collect an additional field called branch. So the same thing happens. The front end will still ask the same question to the back end. But this time, the back end will return an additional field called branch. And because the form is generated dynamically, the front end is able to generate a new form that has the branch in it. So with all these things collected when they submit, 
all the required fields will be, still be collected and sent over to WISE, and we are able to process that information. Of course, what I have shown just now is a very, very simplified example. It is not what we are using at WISE right now because it's too simple. What we have is more featured full and more complex. So why it is too, sim too simplified? First of all, if you remember the JSON payload that we sent back, it is just a list of few names. It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't tell us whether it is a text field, it is a drop-down field, and what are the different validation mechanisms there is. So the user could have input anything under the sun, and that's not what we want. We want something that is more legit, right? We need to validate the data. So at WISE, we built this thing called Dynamic Flow. At WISE, Dynamic Flow is now used almost everywhere, including customer verification when they are onboarding and trying to send their first transfer. It is used when doing recipient creation, depending on which recipient type you want to create. It's used when we are collecting additional transfer details, like um, why are you creating this transfer, How, um, what is the country of your recipient, and all those things, depending on the regulations. It is also used in customer self-service, so when there is anything additional steps that the customer needs to do afterwards, we will send them a link, then they click on it, they will be greeted with Dynamic Flow as well to collect all the remaining required uh, information. So for Dynamic Flow, what is needed? We need to know what to collect, like what few, how to collect. Do we use a text box? Do we use a drop-down box, radio button, or anything? Once we have collected, we need to make sure that we can validate that the values are correct before sending to the server. And finally, we need to know where to send it to. Right? So that's the basic of uh, dynamic flow. This is the initial implementation of what we have. It is called dynamic fuse. For the uh, initial version, we can do simple field types like text, radio buttons, select, which is the drop down, or date input. So we also included some simple validations like length and regex when it comes to text and date. We also provide a list of allowed values in the case of radio button and um, select because we need to show that to the user for them to select. So this is a simple example of one of the fields that we use in dynamic fields. It includes the field name, the field type, and some simple validation mechanism, like minimum length, maximum length, as well as a regex for them to make sure the values are correct. OK. That's fine. But soon, we realize that we need something that is more powerful than that. We need something that is more dynamic, more uh, feature. So what do we do? OK, before that, sorry. <laughs> we need to know what is missing, right? Before we, we know what's the next step. So what's missing? First of all, it, re it tells us the list of fields to collect but it doesn't tell us the order, like how do we order them in the page, and we don't tell them how to lay it out so everything would be in a single column. It doesn't look very nice. Second, it doesn't have any additional information, like images, instructions, tooltips, all those things are not available, so it's not very helpful to the customer. Third, it only has basic fields, like text fields and drop downs, but it cannot uh, support something complex like camera capture or QR code scanning, document uploads, that, that kind of stuff. So that's three. Number four would be dynamic fields is supporting one single form. So once it generates, it's a one page form at the very end, you just click on submit and then it, that's the end of the flow. But sometimes we need a proper flow with multiple steps, not just one simple form. So um, that's what is missing. Submission URL, 
if we've gone through everything to make it dynamic and we still keep the URL of where it's supposed to set submit to hard coded in the front end, it's not really doing much dynamics, right? So that is one part that we think is still missing and we need to build upon it. So this is what we do. Um, we improve on it. We build a new version of it called Dynamic Flow. Previous one is Dynamic Fields. So this includes things like the submission endpoint that we have, I've suggested just now. It has the few UI, icon images, help warnings, um, the display order, and some messages when things are not validated properly. Okay, so this is what we have right now. So enough talking, let's have a quick demo. I have prepared some on the slides demo, not a live one, unfortunately. Okay, so this on the left would be what it will be looking like as the, as the form. On the right side would be the specification that you can um, provide through your backend in the form of JSON. So this is a skeleton of it. Let's add a submit button because a form without a button is meaningless, right? So let's add a button. Now a button appears. And let's add some selection dropdown. So let's have two selections, Singapore and United Kingdom. So if you look on the left side, it shows up as a radio button. What if we add one more option? Let's say we add Malaysia to the, to the list of options. And you see on the left, it, instead of a radio button, it now becomes a dropdown box. If we look inside the dropdown box, yes, it has the three options that we have previously selected. So all these things are done by the dynamic flow. It doesn't require you to change anything on your front end as long as you are able to provide the, the JSON specification through your back end correctly, it should show up in your front end automatically. So you don't have to recode, redeploy your front end. Now let's try adding a text box. So this is a very simple text box with a placeholder, but this doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't validate against anything. So let's try to add some validations to it. Now, if you look on the right side, we are adding a minimum length of three and maximum length of six. So this is some ba very basic validation that we have. And if you look on the left, I purposely put it to, be, to fail the validation. So you will see an error desk that says, please enter at least three characters. Suppose I don't like this word of please enter three characters, I can change it. So let's do it. I added some validation messages for each of the validation. And now if you look at the example, the message has changed to what I have provided. So this whole thing is dynamic. You can change the message however you want using, um, by changing the value in the JSON. And this means if you want to support localization, because you, you are moving into many countries, you need localized users experience, as long as your backend is able to return the JSON in the localized language, your front end will show up with that language that you have provided. So it would be very powerful if you are going to, into multiple markets. So what about design change, right? So if you are using what we have built and it shows up in our wise colors, doesn't make sense for you, right? So with uh, dynamic flow, it doesn't actually uh, our design element. So with just a click of a button, not a click of a button, it's more, as long as you provide it with your own design system, it should be able to render according to what you have. So this is what we have seen just now. We can easily change it to more green, if you like green. Um, the JSON payload is still the same. If we want to change it to something else like the blue one, you can do it as well. So the blue one is what we have um, in the past. The green one is what we have earlier in March when we do a brand refresh. Yeah. So that's how powerful it is when it comes to design change. So that was a quick example using JSON of how you can use the dynamic flow. 
And now let's have a look at how does Dynamic Flow works like in Wise app. Okay, so this entire thing is built using Dynamic Flow. Um, it is built for um, first-time users, so we will collect a lot more information. So if you see here, there are different types of recipient, bank, trans uh, bank transfer versus pay now. We are using pay now. Uh, sorry, we are using bank transfer. And these two fields are what we have seen just now, a drop-down as well as text box. Because it's first time, so we need to ask a lot more questions. And each of them is a step. So it is not just a form, it is a flow with multiple steps. OK, so now we need to upload proof of address so we can add a field to collect the proof of address. So in this case, we are adding a bill, a sample bill. Then we need some proof of identity. So we can try to upload our image of our passport. So this looks different from the previous one because um, it is the JSON format is different. Once it is given, continue, and then we can continue with the flow to create a transfer. OK, nice. So this is uh, one of the more extensive uh, dynamic flow that we have at WISE because we need to collect so many things especially for a first-time user. So we have had a look at how it, it's like from the specification JSON point of view, but how does it look like from an architecture side? This is the architecture of the dynamic flow. The backend will, take, will generate the specification JSON that we have, um, have a demo just now. The renderer will take in design, design elements from your design system. Most companies have one, so just take it and put it to the renderer. The renderer will then spit out a UI that can be presented to your user in their app. Okay? So this is how the architecture looks like. So what does it mean for the developers? There are two things. First thing is that it is very fast because it is dynamic. If the specification lives in a database as a data, you change that data, immediately that new flow will appear on your user's app without them updating anything. It will just appear. So it is very fast. You can get to market almost immediately. The second thing is that once you build the dynamic flow correctly, because it includes the endpoint of where to submit it to and all those things together, once you build it once, technically, from the backend side, as long as you can add new flow anytime, that new flow will appear on your front end as well. So you don't need to make any change to your front end code. OK, as a long term goal, we are trying to ship an SDK for dynamic flow. This is what, uh, let me give you a story uh, of how we started building it. When we built it, um, things were very difficult, but across everything, we have generated some insights. First is that to come up with the, J the specification JSON, it is not that hard. It's just backend changes. To come up with design system, actually we don't have to because our company has already have a previous design system that we can just plug in and use. I, I believe this is the same for the rest of your companies. You should have your own design system. So that should not be uh, a concern. The hardest part that we have is to come up with the, with the renderer. Why? This is because just down in the video, you see that even with just a simple form upload, or, um, it is taking a lot of time for us to build it because we now have over 90 different components to support, and that is a lot. So it would be a shame, right, if we have spent so much time building it and you have to build it over and over again. So we are trying to ship an SDK to use with our WISE API and features. But the same, API, uh, the same SDK should also be available and usable for you when you provide your own specification JSON. 
So this is what the SDK is doing. You generate your specification, you feed it into the SDK. The SDK will generate the UI page for your user. So we give you our renderer. You give it the design system, and then the renderer should generate the UI page based on your design system, your specifications, and it should look exactly how you want it to be. So today we have covered um, how we come up with dynamic flow, what it is, how we can use it, and what the SDK would be looking like. Um, if you have any questions about dynamic flow, or if you have any need to know about Wise Platform on how we can help your user to get uh, to manage money better internationally, do reach out to us to see how we can figure out to help you. If you want to know more about Wise Platform, this is our website, platform.wise.com. Once again, my name is Yi Hui. These are my contacts. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.